you got the clock on the wall. The clock on the wall is just showing you the timing of things. You know, typically you know that, okay, sun's going to rise around six o'clock, high noon, oh, time to eat lunch, six, six o'clock, oh, time to eat dinner, midnight, you're, you're in bed sleeping, right? Your, 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 your day-to-day routine is governed by this cycle more than anything else, right? The, the day-night cycle. Yes. The clock on the wall isn't causing anything to happen. Unless, of course, the clock you know, has the alarm. Think of that as a catastrophe. You're sound asleep. You know, you're in dreamland. You're having this heavenly dream. And then all of a sudden, the alarm clock goes off. And now you have to go through this transition state from one phase state to another. Now you have to wake up and get up. You know, you, you could kind of look at that as a catastrophe, see? Yes, yeah. But the clock isn't really causing it. But that's my point. The, 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 the processional cycle is not necessarily causing anything. But, but it may be the wobble might have been caused by whatever something. thing that was. Well, and see here, yes, because we do have a real world phenomena, which is the Earth's axis doing this, this whole processional wobble. Well, primarily, that processional wobble is considered to be a function of of the moon. It's the it's it's of course the sum total of every external force affecting the earth but okay. the greatest is the moon um just as the the you know there are solar tides but they're not nearly as as prominent as lunar tides so it's the moon is the is the the primary mass that would be doing this but there are other things it may see and here's perhaps the way we need to be thinking about this is when we begin to look at these the ratios of the sizes and distances and periodicities of the planetary objects and then we begin to look at the the larger scale periodicities and we'll do, we could get into this sometime because I don't have that material at my fingertips now, but to illustrate it, but to show that with some small adjustments, we can actually bring all of these things into phase. Mm-hmm. And we see the numbers just popping out the numbers, the, 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 all of these numbers. See, like for example, the sun, is it exactly 864,000? miles Mm -hmm. depends on how you how you measure the thickness of the chromosphere and i mean you know that can vary i mean so somebody might want to split hairs and say oh the sun is really eight hundred and sixty-five thousand miles well that doesn't really change anything you see that is what i'm trying to say because it's close enough and we have to understand i'm trying to get people to understand this idea between an idealized order of things and which was sort of the platonic idea, the idea that there is this idealized geometric order. Pythagoras was very much all about that. And then there's the real world, right? And the real world is going to deviate somewhat from the idealized template. And that was the the thing you've got. So maybe the extent of the deviation is an extent of the malfunctioning of the whole system, perhaps. Mm. My first guess is that in order to look at a correlation between processional cycles and catastrophes is we have to be looking at exogenic phenomena. We have to be looking at the cosmic domain. Right. right. Yeah, I agree with that. We, we, we've got to, we've got to go there. And at that point, it could be that there is a synchrony going on between, you know, the dance of the planets, the influx of cometary material, the pulse of the sun, all of these things could be related. If, if the planetary orbits are involved in enhancing the flux of material from the outer zones, the cometary zones, into the sun, and we now are finding evidence that the infall of sun grazing comets may be a trigger for enhanced solar activity, you see, we have to be, I think we have to look at this whole thing as an integrated system, mm-hmm, yeah. is what I'm getting at. The rota- The sun takes about... 24 25 days to rotate yeah. on it. so it's yeah. close to matching these being in these numbers too even its own right <laughs> and then then there's the galactic level you know right. there's there's we're, we're orbiting the galaxy and you know there's been speculation about how our own solar system is kind of doing a sine curve through space successively crossing the galactic plane and it could be that when our solar system is crossing the galactic plane that there is an enhanced possibility. That's purely uh, uh, conjecture, but you know, there may be something to that or, well, you know, we really happening. It seems like we must be a binary system because it would actually be doing a, 
yeah. we'd be going along like this and so then from mm-hmm. the side it would look like we're making a sine wave yeah because right well I mean, it'd be kind of hard to turn the whole solar system back around and make it go the other direction right you know what i'm saying what's also interesting is every 11 years or so the mm-hmm. sun elect uh, it's it's magnetic pole flips and if we're actually going up and down through the galactic plane we're going oh. up and down into positive galaxy pole negative galaxy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, that, that that's cool yeah right now one of the issues that's come up in some of the work that i've looked at over the years would suggest that there was a so we say a subgalactic orbital center almost as if a, uh, looking at the scaling ratio say between the moon and the earth the earth and the sun um the sun and the galaxy there's a, cons- it, it's almost like there, there's a missing level yes. or, or a, a missing that, that would actually kind of unify the whole system. And so there's been conjecture going into some of the work of, of Gurdjieff and, again, some of the theosophists, I think, and, and a number of others who have referred to traditions about this, what I would call a subgalactic orbital center. And that would be a fun thing to talk about at some point, um, which would involve most of the stars say that are within 20 to 30 light years, possibly being part of a coherent system um, on the um, part of an orbital system within the galaxy. So there may be, in other words, the point here being that there may be something, some center around which our solar system is orbiting, which is in turn orbiting the galaxy. Yeah. Yeah. that's. But at this point that would only be speculative, but it is not without certain uh, traditions. So yeah. that would be something that would be, I think, worthwhile to explore. 